Check her bleeding. bleeding. Well, okay. So well, I, I, I thought help. I was already. Yeah. Okay, so she's bleeding. Is that it? Just well, let's let's. Let, is the placenta up. boring yet? No. Let's birth up. that placenta. Maybe we need to get her up into a squat to get that out. Is she? Right. She did not pain. Right. right. And then when she was saying she felt like fainting, yeah. I figured we wouldn't be able to get her up yeah. into a squat. So. So we yeah. have to. You have to decide what you're going to do. So, so. are you feeling any better, Molly? Not yet. Can you get me something? Okay. So Molly. Yeah. A drink, how about that? Yeah. A 
So what I do is I'll just gently guide it. I'm not pulling it, I'm just gently guiding it. Okay, so I guess this, we're just going to say that this comes out. but solid circular motion. I just hold the uterus down. Can we take the blanket so, no, right off need to plug just so that other people can I'm see what you're doing? Yeah, how yeah. So are you at the top of the uterus? Yes. No. Okay. Yeah, cool. you want to be at the top because it, otherwise it, it will slip under your hand. Okay, and you kind of cup it? Yeah, so you cup it like that. Okay, oh, sorry. perfect. <laughs> I'm used to <laughs> abdomens that are, that, you know. <laughs> I'm used to postpartum <laughs> abdomens. <laughs> I like you know, that. You're going to be careful to push straight back towards the spine so that you don't risk yes. pushing it out. Yes. Oh, you don't. Yes, but you, you have, have to cup it, it so yep. that it cup doesn't it. slip behind you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it's, it, it is just a gentle downward as well, but it's mainly towards the spine. Back. Okay. <clears throat> And like I say, if, okay. if you see tons of blood coming out, you just put both of your hands and just your all your weight on that to okay. stop it. Okay. And that's after the placenta is already delivered. Yes. After the placenta is yeah. delivered. You don't want to do yeah. too much pressure before because all those capillaries, all those blood vessels are still open. And you okay. can make it partially detach. If it's right. not you completely cause detached, problems. you can yeah. cause problems. However, but. I don't believe that it would partially detach from a solid no. pressure. But you're still waiting until after go like it comes this, to do that. Then that can make it. So you can do, you can do pressure if the placenta is in there, but be very careful and no real vigorous rubbing, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Because I'll, I'll sometimes hold the uterus, just gently hold it, so that I can tell, you know, if it's contracting or not, and then it, I can, you can feel it go, get harder and go into a contraction, mm -hmm. and then I'll say. Why don't you try pushing and see if the placenta will come out? Because I can feel that she's in a contraction already, and then and then I'll guide it out and then just roll it. Through, uh, or, uh, oh, okay. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like massage. Mull it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You look so. a little better. Are you feeling better, Mom? Yeah. And and if the bleeding is heavy, I'll I'll hold it for an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I'll hold it for an hour, and it's it's more effective than pitocin. I have proven it to be more effective than pitocin. Mm. So. Um, I have also Which worked in, like help. I said, areas where we didn't even have we all we had was methargen. We didn't even have oxytocin or IVs or anything. So you have to learn how to deal with hemorrhage without all those th drugs. And most of the time, in a low resource setting, you're not going to have oxytocin mm -hmm. or pitocin. So what we've done too in sometimes in certain settings is where you have one person holding it and actually it can, like Rochelle's really strong and has a lot of endurance. Not everybody can do that for a full hour, but believe me, if you're trying to save a mother's life, it can, it will save her life. So you want to be able to do it. And what you can do is if you are too tired, you can pass off just like you do with neonatal resuscitation and you start, to get, you start getting tired, you have a team, so you, why don't we demonstrate that? Okay. You, you're, you're doing it, and say this is a long-term thing where you've had to hold for a while and you're getting tired, you're gonna switch to Zoe. So Zoe's gonna come in and get a chance to try. So and Zoe, is, come on down, crouch And this is after her. the placenta has yeah, expelled? Yeah, this is after. You can tell when you take your hand off and she starts bleeding again that you got to keep it on. It's just mm -hmm. like any kind of a, yeah. a bleeding wound. And so, oh, and, and it's really important that when you take the pressure off that you go really slow. A real abrupt let go is really uncomfortable oh, yeah. for women. Also yeah. an abrupt, yeah. you know, uh, going respectful. in. respectful. So you kind of try so, to slide the second hand in underneath. Yeah, that's what I did as you were. Yeah, yeah. Was, you, that was did. perfect yeah. how you did yeah. that. Yeah. Can you great. do it again so I can see? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding down and then she, so I'm going to, I slightly let up and then she just comes in like that. Maybe a little bit slower. Okay. And, okay. 
And then, so it helps if you, when you're doing things that are really difficult with your arms, mm -hmm. um, using your whole, you know, ergonomic, physical body to, right. to do it. And okay. Using your weight. Oh, okay. Your whole yeah, body your weight. weight. Oh, okay. You don't probably want to do, do that right now. now. <laughs> but right. Do you want to do that? <laughs> Does anybody else want to try this just while we're doing it? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have a small <laughs> diameter of your waist. Okay. So, um, let's actually, you know, I guess if we had something in there that to simulate a... I'd like to just say videos. about this though, is you don't need to do this with every single woman. No. If you really are in a situation where you're in a low resource environment and there is a risk and you believe that, what do you think, um, Rochelle, that if you, the circumstances that would require you to do this, what would they be? If you were in a low resource setting and you really had no way of calling emergency services, yeah. why not? I mean, do it, because yeah. at, at the least, you'll just keep her from losing another half a cup of blood. Right. And that's good. Right. Right? The right. more blood she's left with, the better off she's going to be. Yes. So. Okay. So let's do one more quick scenario and involve a few people from our audience. So I guess we'll other people wanted to, did other people want to try this or no? Did anybody want to? No, no one's putting their hand up right now. So um, let's, let's, um, let's go through... Uh, What's our next thing on the okay. schedule? Do we so want to do another one as a group? We could. Or we, we, we kind of should we Okay, we'll so break we up in groups. Up. Okay. So, um, where is When we split up in the groups, you'll all get a chance to try this. So you can all try uh, different roles. So you'll do three or four different scenarios in your group, and each one will have a leader. And so the more actively involved you get, the more you're going to learn. You learn as a you, your whole entire being learns, and muscle memory is really vital for this kind of thing because you do sometimes get a little bit nervous or there might be a lot going on. So practicing it, then you start thinking, hey, this isn't so bad. I could do this for real life when you have to. So the guys are going to do this too, right? Yes. Guys, like, yeah. really everyone who think. wants a certificate, you got to get involved. The guys, the guys don't have to be the mom, but <laughs> no. thank you, Molly. Thank you, midwives. Okay, so that brings up a question. When would you ask them to derobe in the store? Like you acted out every section of it, but she had those wonderful pants on. That's a good. When would you ask them to derobe? Like, if, if paramedics are coming, but but no paramedics are coming, so when do you know when to take their clothes off, and how do you do that? Well, I said I felt something coming out, and usually oh. they would feel something like that, and, and now you, you the, can ask them. A mom will know. She's going to know when her baby's coming. Yeah. She's going to say, the baby's coming. Yeah. I'd be, I, yeah. I'd but be sometimes she's so oh, overwhelmed. Oh, oh, yeah. Just, uh, you know, so, but you know what? If... I mean, you'll see bulging in the oh. pants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're the person who's concerned about her privacy, her modesty, make the circle around the woman the with your back to her. Hold a blanket right. to guard the view. If that's your concern, rush in and do that. That's your piece of help. I think just I think you know your question is really good. Um, I think that every circumstances would be kind of unique. But I think just showing respect for the mother's modesty, respect, and also understanding that maybe she's kind of disorientated. And so to help her say, maybe you could take your panties off, your baby's coming, or let's take your pants off now. Or just really clear, short instructions. Not a lot of questions. Okay. So and you could use a blanket to cover her so she doesn't feel so exposed. Okay. That's good, yeah. One more thing, um, if she, as, what you could do is, you could just have her un undo the pants um, and not necessarily take them off. And that way, at least, it's loosened things up so that if the baby is coming, this is sliding off. Yeah. OK. So um, how many groups have we got, Mary? OK, so we're going to break into groups now. So Michelle, if you could come up in the middle, Kenley. So we've got four <laughs> groups. Um, where's Ma uh, Maggie? Right here. There you are, Maggie's heart. And yeah. then we're together.